Hi, this is Thomas Lafoe from the Instructional Media Center. In this tutorial, we'll be looking at the tools available in Adobe InDesign CS 5.5 for creating large format poster sessions. If this is your first time to use your copy of InDesign, or if you're on a public computer that resets itself to the defaults, the first thing that you'll want to check is that the units and increments are set correctly. To do this, we'll go to Edit, Preferences, Units and Increments. From this menu, you can change the horizontal and vertical measurements to inches. Click OK. And now you're ready to begin a new document. To create a new document, you can choose New Document from this welcome screen, or you can go to File, New, and then Document. For this poster session, we're going to create a custom page size. We want to set the width of our document to be 72 inches and the height to be 44 inches. Here in this window, you can also choose to set up column guides. For this poster session, we're going to have three columns. We're going to set our margins to be one inch all the way around. Typing one in the first margin box and pressing tab will set all of the margins to an equal measurement. To change these margins or to create custom margins, click the link between the boxes and this will allow the margins to be changed independently. We're going to leave these set to one inch all the way around. And again, I want to make sure that my gutter matches my margins so that I can have even spacing across my entire document. I'm going to change the gutter to one inch, press tab, and now I'm ready to click OK. Additional margins can be added to your document. To add an additional margin, move to the ruler at the top of your document, click, and drag to the point where you want to place the new guide. After placing the guide, you'll notice that it's selected with a dark blue color. At the top of your screen, you'll notice your tool options. Here, I can enter a precise measurement, such as 10 inches. Press Tab. And now I know that that guide is placed exactly at 10 inches. I'm going to make this a little bit less and type 8 inches. This now sets up an area for the title of my poster session. To add in the title, I'm going to select the text tool, move over to my document, and draw a box that fits within my margins and touches the new guide. After I place the text box, you will notice that the tool options at the top of your screen change to the character and paragraph options. I also can see a very small cursor blinking in the top left corner. With my tool options, I can change my font. I will change this to Arial. You can change the boldness of the font. You'll notice that Arial has several built-in font types, from narrow all the way to black. I'm going to choose Arial Black for the boldest font. And I'm going to change my point size to 72. Now we can type in a title and see how that looks. After typing my title, I can see that it runs to a second line. So in this case, I may choose to break this to two lines. I may also want to center this title. To center it, you select your text, as you would in any other program. And then I'm going to click in my tool options to my paragraph settings. Here in my paragraph settings, I can change this to center. I can also click back to my character options. Here I may want to make that text larger. 72 is the last number that I see in this drop-down box. But if I use the arrows at the side, I can increase the size of those letters. You can also type in a number manually. Now I've gone too far with it. But now if I use my down arrow, I can shrink that to where it still takes up most of the poster session title area. I'm going to click at the end of my title, press enter to go to a new line, change my font to something slightly less bold, 
and type my name and university. After I type that in, I may want to highlight it and decrease that point size so that it doesn't compete quite so much with my title. At this point, I may want to center the title vertically. To do this, I can select the text box using my selection tool. The selection tool serves as a home base. After you add anything, like a text box or a image frame or a graphic, you want to select your selection tool, which gives you the sizing handles around this shape, but it also lets you change some options about that shape. If I go to Object, I can select Text Frame Options. Here, I can choose to center the vertical justification. You can click the preview box to see exactly how that will look and then click OK. Also while I have this text box selected if I click on my swatches palette I can change some different options about this box. Since this is a text frame I have the ability to change the color of the box itself and also the text. In this case, I'm going to select the box. I'm going to select the fill color, change it to red. And for the text, I'm going to click on the T, click on my fill to make sure it's at the front, and then click paper. Now you can see that with this selection tool and with the swatches palette, I can change the color of the text and also the box or the background without having to select the text itself. The colors that are present in the swatches palette are the generic CMYK colors and also the RGB colors. To add additional swatches, for example, if I wanted to change the background to, instead of red, a maroon color, I can click on this little icon here, which is your menu for your swatch palette, click New Color Swatch, and from this box, if I adjust the colors that I see here on these sliders, then you can see that that color changes. For this example, I'm going to change the color mode to Pantone Solid Coated. For this particular maroon color, I want to select Pantone 202. Make sure that the swatch is selected in the box below and click OK. You'll notice that now since the text box was still selected and now my color is selected, my new Pantone 202 color, that swatch is applied to the fill. For the three columns of my poster session, I want to create some colored backgrounds. I know that I want to keep my margins equal all the way around, so I need to make another guide to indicate my one inch spacing from my title. To do this, I'm going to click and drag this down. Remembering that I added the first guide at 8 inches, if I drag this guide to 9 inches and release, I know that I've put that 1 inch margin. To double check the position of this guide, click on it with your selection tool and check your tool options at the top of your screen. If the guide is not placed exactly, you can use the up and down arrows to adjust its position. To add a background, instead of using the text tool, I'm going to use the rectangle tool and drag a rectangle starting at the top left margin and moving to the bottom right margin. That places a rectangle in that position with no fill and a black stroke. Here I'm going to leave the black stroke selected but I'm going to select the fill color and change it to black. Now I don't want solid black, what I want is a gray. So if I notice at the top of my swatches palette, I can change the tint of this color. I will drag this slider down to 20%. And now if I click back to my selection tool, I have a rectangle placed in that first column. A quick way to duplicate this rectangle is to hold down your Alt key, and you'll notice that your cursor changes to a double arrow. Click and drag and it will duplicate that shape as you move it.
Holding down Alt, I'm going to click and drag a second time. And now I have backgrounds for all three columns. The middle background, if I wanted to change the color of this to my Pantone 202, I select that shape with my selection tool, make sure that the fill is selected first, or that it is on top, and then select my Pantone color. You can see that the tint is still applied to this. That's something that you can leave if you'd like. If you would like that to be darker, just click and drag that slider under tint back to 100%. When you're ready to start adding your text to your poster session, it's very helpful to zoom in on the areas where you'll be typing. To do this, and to give myself a bit more room, I'm going to click on the swatches palette to close that for now. And at the bottom of my toolbar, I'm going to grab my magnifying lens. Here I'm going to draw a box around the top half of my first column. You will see that InDesign does its best to zoom in on that area. Now using my text tool, I can click and drag a box that will serve as my first text frame. Setting your font type and font size at this point will assist you in copying and pasting from other documents. For this text frame, I'm going to change to Times New Roman, I'm going to change the point size to 48, and then I'm going to paste some text that I've copied from Word. In many cases, as you type or paste your text into a text frame, the text will run outside of the box if there's not enough room. When this happens, you will see a small red plus sign at the bottom right corner of the text frame. If this is the case, use your selection tool to select the box and resize it until the text reappears. When you are dealing with text in InDesign, there is a helpful workspace that you can use. We've been working in the Essentials workspace, but if we change this to Typography, you will see that the palettes available here at the side include the Character palette and also the Paragraph palette. The Character palette allows me to change many things about my text. With the text frame selected, I can use the Character palette to increase my font size, I can change the letting, which serves as my line spacing. And with the paragraph palette, I can change my alignment. Also in your paragraph palette is the ability to turn hyphenation on and off. Generally, for a poster session, people will be reading your information from a distance. Hyphenation can be hard to read at a distance, so turning this off will keep your words together and not break them at the end of the line. Clicking back to my selection tool, I can also make some changes to the box itself. Here I'm going to select my swatches palette, as we did previously with the title. For this, I want to select my stroke color, and I do have the box selected. I'm going to add my Pantone color, to the stroke, and to increase the weight of that stroke, I'm going to select the stroke palette. You can increase the weight of the stroke. Also moving back to the swatches palette, I can change the color of the text to Pantone 202, but as you will notice, now that I've added that stroke and changed the color of my text, the text is running right against that stroke. We can change that with the inset spacing. To find your inset spacing, select your text frame with your selection tool, then go to Object, Text Frame Options. Here, with my preview selected, I can increase my inset spacing, and as you will see, the text moves away from the stroke. Click OK. To adjust paragraph settings individually, such as the abstract title, if I highlight just abstract, move over to my paragraph settings, and change my alignment, it will only change for that one line. 
To insert images, you will use the Frame tool. This is shown right above the Rectangle tool and is the tool that has an X in it. Click on your Frame tool and draw a box that will contain your image. After you draw the box, it's a good practice to get into going to the Selection tool. To select that box, you can make any adjustments that you need. Then you will choose File and Place. Browse for your file and click Open. Once the file is placed in the frame, you will notice that it may not fit. You have several options to fix this. You can right click on the image, choose Fitting, and one of the first two options. Fill frame proportionately will increase the size of the image to fill the entire frame but leaving it in proportion. The second option, Fit Content Proportionately, will fit the image in the box without stretching it. Now you will notice that since this frame is not the same shape as the image, I will just need to make some adjustments. So here I will grab the edge of this box and drag it in to meet the image. Now using the selection tool, I can place this image in different locations. I can also choose to crop this image if I need to. If I wanted to remove some of the sky from this image, sizing the frame down will then remove that extra area of the image. Once you have an image in a frame, you can also move to the center and use the content grabber to adjust how that picture fits in the frame. Using your selection tool and selecting anywhere around the center will then move the frame once more. Just like with text frames, image frames can have a fill and stroke as well. A shortcut for fill and stroke is located in your tool options for your selection tool. If you notice these two boxes here, a quick solution is to click on the stroke. I can scroll down, find my Pantone 202 color, and right next to those, I can also adjust the weight of that stroke. And now you can see I have the image with a 10 point stroke around the edge. In my third column, I have added some text and formatted it the way I want it to appear on my poster session. But I want to add an image to break this text up just a little bit. So I'm going to use my frame tool, draw a frame, I'm going to select the frame with my selection tool, go to File, Place, and select my image. Click OK. Now again I can right click, choose Fitting, and we'll choose Fill Frame Proportionately. Now you'll notice that this image is blocking some of my text. If you are still set to typography in your workspace, you can select Text Wrap. The Text Wrap option, the second one listed here at the top, will turn on the text wrap and push the text away from the image. You can also adjust how far away that image pushes that text. Notice again, as we created our new document, we had this same chain link here in the middle of these boxes. If we break that, we can control how much in each direction the text wrap pushes the text. Here I'll type one inch, press enter, and now I get the same spacing that I have between my gutters. Using these tools, the guides, the text frames, image frames, and shapes, you can present your research any way you like. If you have any questions, please visit our website at library.msstate.edu imc.